Your TA Indiana and I are going to show you how to interpolate data that is collected in tables or on a plot. But this little dude loves to gamble and he bet me a popsicle that you already know how to interpolate and uh, we don't need to teach you, we just need to help you kind of unlock what you already have intuition for. So let's test out his theory with this first example problem. No calculators, just mental math. We think you can do this. You're going on a road trip. You're gonna leave at 1 p.m. and arrive at your destination at 5 p.m. Now during this four hour trip, you're gonna travel a total of 200 miles. So if you're in the middle of your trip right now and you look at your watch and it says 4 p.m., how many miles have you already driven? So this is interpolation, and I'll pause for a couple of seconds so you can try to work this answer out in your head to see how your intuition is. And if you say 150 miles, then you nailed it, and your TA Indy wins the bet. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you got this question right, and pay Indy off right, here's his popsicle. This is his number one favorite treat, so leave me a comment down below if you did get this right and he actually earned it. So what we wanna show you is how to put your intuition, the thoughts in your head, onto paper in a way that you can duplicate when you look up tables for, for tests and homeworks and things. So the key to interpolation is fractions, and more specifically, percentages. You're gonna set up two fractions, one with the information you know, and one with the information that you're trying to find, the denominators of your fractions are the total range of values from the beginning of the road trip to the end of the road trip. And the numerator is the partial range up to the point that you're interested in. And the top left term in both fractions will always be the number you are given in your problem statement, in this case, the 4 p.m., that point that's in the middle. And on the other fraction will be the thing you're trying to find. And each of these fractions represents the percentage, in this case, 75% as to how much of the road trip has already been completed or how far from the lower number you have gotten towards the larger number. Your TA Indy's back here relaxing with some brain freeze. So let's do a thermodynamics example problem to warm him back up a little bit. You are given water as a liquid vapor mixture with 10 degrees Celsius as your temperature and a specific volume of 80 meters cubed per kilogram. And I'm asking you to find what is enthalpy. If you don't even know what enthalpy is, don't worry about that. If you're taking thermodynamics, you'll get there eventually. If you're watching this video and you're not in thermodynamics, welcome, I'm, I'm really glad to see you. So here's a table from the FE reference manual where you'll see the properties of saturated steam and enthalpy is one column in this table. So even if you don't know what enthalpy is, just know that we're looking at these values in this table in this column, enthalpy. And if you are curious, it's basically like energy. You've probably heard of kinetic energy or gravitational potential energy. Well, enthalpy is a combination of energy that is stored as temperature and energy that is stored as pressure, right? Because warmer water holds more energy and also water that's under high pressure holds more energy. All right, but back to the fractions. So first fraction is the fraction that we are given. We were given 80 meters cubed per kilogram which at 10 degrees Celsius, unfortunately falls in between the totally liquid and totally gas values. So the denominator is the total range that my number is in between, and the numerator is just my partial range from the smaller number up to 80. The second fraction is the fraction for the thing I'm looking for, enthalpy. The denominator is the total range of values at 10 degrees Celsius from completely liquid to completely vapor, and the numerator is just the partial range, just from the minimum up to my value, what I am looking for. A little bit of algebra and calculator work gives me enthalpy 1905 kilojoules per kilogram. And this is every interpolation problem, whether you're interpolating horizontally across a row, vertically between the rows, whether you have to do double interpolation, you just set up two fractions, one with the quantity that you are given and one with the quantity that you're trying to find. Both fractions should be like, each term should correspond, like the lower left term in both fractions should be corresponding to each other. And you're always solving for the top left value of the second fraction every single time. So Indy's back on his treadmill, ready to burn off some popsicle calories. So we gotta take a quick little break to get him some exercise. All right, he's back and amped up, full of energy, ready to help out with the last section, which is gonna be to show you that this also works for plotted data, not just data in tables. 
A regression line is going to be the way to incorporate all of the data to find a trend, and that's going to be the best way to find out kind of points that are in between. But if you just want something kind of quick and you don't care if it's not perfect, then linear interpolation is the best way. So looking at these plotted points, suppose you wanted to find the y value when x equals 6. So you set up one fraction for your givens, that's the x values. You know your x is between 5 and 9, and the specific value is 6. And your second fraction is the values you are looking for, the y values. You know that your answer will be between 10 and 15, but exactly how far? That's the number you're looking for. The top left value of this fraction is always the one you're solving for. Fraction on the left side works out to be 25%. So on the right hand side, 25% of the gap gets us a value of y of 11.25. Most common mistake for this type of problem would be to end up with an answer of 13.75, which is sort of the mirror image as if you were sort of closer to the 15, but still that same like 1.25 gap. And so the way to check your final answer is to recognize that you were given a value of six, which is very close to five. So your final answer should be closer to the corresponding y value at x equals five, which was 10. So your answer of 11.25 is closer to 10 than to 15. So if you're getting the hang of it, but want some more practice problems, then the video linked on the screen right here is gonna be more thermodynamic steam table style interpolation example problems.